this is actually a laser cut uh, wood kit and I'm really excited to see um, just how well this uh, goes together. This would be a perfect little signal box for uh, going into little nooks and crannies on the layout and just really bringing scenes alive. Hi there everyone, welcome along to another video up here in the loft on Weir Yard with me, Jenny Kirk. It's really great to see you, I hope you're well. And today we've got a new product review. It's actually a two for new product review uh, sent over by the kind people at Pico to put my model making skills to the test. So we've got them both here and we're going to be road testing these two kits. But I'd also like to uh, let you know about the sponsor who is Trainomatic uh, through Tram Fabric. They are makers of DCC decoders and other associated products that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts to be the best possible, most intuitive on the market. So without further ado, let's take a look. <laughs> Well, here are the products. We've got the Pico 00 stroke HO gauge LK201 Highland Railway signal box that they've sent over. And this has actually really intrigued me. Now, I'm normally used to the Pico kits being an injection molded plastic affair, but this is actually a laser cut uh, wood kit. And I'm really excited to see um, just how well this uh, goes together. It's a material that I've seen some really good effects with other kits before with this, although I've not actually tried building any myself. So I'm really excited to take a go at that. So a big thank you to Pico for sending this over to test my modeling skills with. And also they've sent over the um, O-Gage LK710 signal box interior kit. And uh, I'm actually really quite drawn by the picture on the back here where we can see a kind of cutaway signal box. That What you see in the dark grey there isn't actually part of this kit. What you get are all these lovely little detail additions to actually bring the interior of a signal box to life. And I think in O-Gage this is something that's really going to look quite special because it's big enough that you can really see that detail. And actually... I'm, I'm very tempted to get one of these little um, signal box kits and remove the back from it so I can build it with all of this detail in and really make a feature of that. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit later on in this review. But first of all, um, I've got to build it. So let's put my modelling skills to the test and see what we can do with this kit. So here we are. This is the Pico OOHO line sight kit. LK201 Highland Railway signal box and this is based on the one that's at Helmsdale um, so we can see here easy to assemble kit combines laser cut wooden parts and plastic mouldings and actually what surprises me a little bit is that um, there's not actually a huge amount of plastic that you use on this kit it's just some little tiny pieces um, most of it is laser cut wood and this is something that we've seen on the market for a little while now on a few different kits but this is the first Pico kit that I've seen employing this method so I'm really excited just to see how this all comes together. Now I know in the past um, some of the Pico kits I've actually really enjoyed building there's been some great stuff um, obviously in their range they've also got ratio they've got wills as well and I've made great use of things like the signal kits I think they're brilliant uh, and also some of the girder bridge sides as well. There's a lot of great useful materials across the range. But this is the first time I've seen this, so I'm really excited to give it a go. It comes in the new Plastic Fantastic packaging. And this is something I actually asked Steve Flint about this, and he went and made inquiries. Because kits used to come in cardboard boxes, and in this age of recycling and sort of peak plastic, um, this is the one area where I do feel that we're going a little bit the wrong way. It does say on the kit, make use of this for some of the glazing parts. And yes, uh, some of this will get used in terms of glazing on the kit. 
but um, I do feel somehow that uh, I know it does say it's recyclable but do check your local council's recycling policy because I know here in Bolton uh, this particular type of plastic can't go in the plastic recycling but enough about that um, we've got all the parts here and first up it actually it does look really nice we've got this it's actually very thin almost like a, a veneer wood that they're using which is laser cut and these components are incredibly fine it has to be said they're all individually numbered just to help you find uh, things on here and it says copyright 2019 so this is a, pr a pretty new model to the range there's two sheets of wood and I think that piece is, is come from there but as far as I can tell that's just scrap anyway. Uh, we're going to have to cut these out uh, but most of the way through has already been cut away. There's just a few tiny little almost like tabs that you need something like a sharp craft knife to get through but it, it's, it's not a difficult um, set of affairs to get these cut out by the look of it. Now the plastic parts, uh, here we have one set of sprues and uh, we've actually got roofs, guttering, ridges and a few other bits and pieces but there is a piece of uh, paper in here as well which says addendum. Included in this kit is a set of plastic mouldings where the only parts applicable for this Highland Railway signal box are the gutters and downpipes. We suggest other parts are kept for scratch building purposes. So I'm guessing that these have been uh, reused from a different kit so they've just um, injection moulded these and it, it just saves on tooling up costs. And it's quite nice as well that some of these other bits and pieces they're actually really good for if you're scratch building something else. So um, a little bit of a bonus from this kit. The instructions themselves are printed on the back of the actual uh, insert for the kit. So we've got there some exploded diagrams and these are always worth their weight in gold just to give you an idea of where all the bits need to go. And then we'll come to painting after we get it done. I think for now uh, we just need to get this together. And it says for fitting a wooden parts we recommend deluxe rocket card glue. And um, as luck would have it, uh, I do actually have in my stash some of the rocket card glue from Deluxe Materials. I personally find this a little bit watery. Um, my preference tends to be to go for Speed Bond. I've actually repurposed a Ballast Magic container here. I find this really useful for giving a, a fairly good applicator. It gives you a little bit more time to manoeuvre stuff, but... I'm going to stick for the purposes of this review, at least initially. We'll see where we get to with the rocket card glue. Um, and uh, uh, essentially, we'll follow their instructions to the letter. So these come with uh, a little applicator tube. So I'm going to uh, put all this together. So we've got our little tube on there. And that's fine. Now some of the other tools that we're going to need, um, I've got a very sharp Stanley knife type blade and we're just going to use that to separate the pieces from the um, the sheet that they come on. You need quite a sharp blade because you don't want to be just crushing your way through because you will distort and break some of these. Now a word of warning, this veneer of the wood is actually quite thin so do treat it with a lot of respect uh, when you're cutting parts out because you don't want to snap along the grain. The other thing I've got here is just a piece of scrap plywood and I use this to cut on just so you don't make a mess. You need a good firm surface to um, just make sure that you get the best cut possible. So that's pretty much all the tools that I'm going to need. I'll use a pair of scissors to cut the glazing out from this package afterwards. Um, but I'm going to get to it um, and see where I get to.
I've been hard at work now for uh, about uh, 45 minutes or so and actually what I'm finding is that this kit is really well uh, thought out. The pieces kind of just like snap together and then you just run a little bead of glue just to hold them in place. It doesn't feel like you have to force any of the pieces in at all and uh, it goes together like a really well designed jigsaw. Now the hardest part I've found is getting the steps in place. It can be done, you've just got to be really careful and you do feel like you're trying to juggle several things at once but they do go in and they do line up so I'm quite pleased with uh, what I've got here. Um, just keep on squeezing these, just make sure they go together. Now at this stage what I want to do is actually start some of the painting process and the reason for this is that uh, if you put the roof on you're not going to be able to paint inside so I want to get a coat of paint throughout this inside and out and then move on to getting the glazing in and the roof on and um, hopefully this will come together to be a really nice little signal box. Uh, it's, it's not the biggest of signal boxes, but actually by being quite a small little dinky thing here, it reminds me a bit of uh, Bella Signal Box, just by Bella Viaduct uh, up in uh, Cumberland. And uh, I think, you know, this would be a perfect little signal box for uh, going into little nooks and crannies on the layout and just really bringing scenes alive. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to uh, start the painting process. I've got my little tub of water. And I'm going to be using artists' uh, watercolour type paints uh, for this. And the reason for this is because it's wood, I don't want to obscure some of that really fine detail which you can see is kind of etched into that wood with the laser. So we've got these vertical planks, we've got this really, really fine uh, window detail, and then we've also got the brickwork down here. So, uh, first up, um, I'm going to use this as a rough painting guide. So what you can see first up, um, I'm going to do white on pretty much everything. Um, so that'll be my base coat. Not worry about all these things that are painted in blue. We'll come back to them. Don't worry about the brickwork down there. In fact, we will coat this brickwork in the white because that will become the mortar courses. Um, when we go over the top, I'm going to use like a, almost like a dry brushing technique to get the brickwork. So um, I'm going to get on and do that. And I've chosen uh, this, my very handy Liquitex Concentrated Acrylic Artist Colour. And this is what I actually use for doing the mortar on plastic kits normally. Uh, just kind of water it down to make uh, a little bit of a, a watery, almost like uh, full cream milk. Uh, but right now I'm going to use it just as a base coat. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in there and uh, I've got myself a brush here, a little bit of water and I'm just going to kind of add in a little bit of water until it's a little bit thicker than I'd normally use for just plain watery mortar but um, that's not what I'm using it for here. And what I'm going to do first is inside the model I'm going to make sure all of that has got a, a base coat. Now the floor itself I might go over in a kind of a, a wood colour. You might be saying but it's already made of wood. Yeah but you probably find in model form some natural product colours don't really seem to quite work so well. So I'll be using probably like a very light wash of burnt sienna, something like that. I'm going to get all behind these windows and the reason I didn't glaze this before doing this step is because otherwise you're going to get all of this paint all over the glazing and it'll just look something of a mess. Now the other thing that this will do is lighten up the inside. So if you want to add a detailed signal box interior you can do that and this lighter interior colour will just help to get that to, to show to good effect. Right, I'm going to start on the outside and again all of that woodwork and there's su such great relief detail on this kit that you can see there. So 
I think sometimes you find certain materials just really work well um, for making models out of and actually this laser cut and etched woodwork is one of those materials that just holds so much more detail than a plastic kit ever would and actually in some respects is so much better even for the painting process I mean this is a pretty much a joy to paint uh, it has to be said it's not like when you paint plastic where it's got that hard non-porous um, surface this just is taking the paint really nicely and it's actually drying quite quickly too it has to be said so may even need a second coat but you can see you're getting some of that wood color bleeding through so it may be that actually what you end up with is um, a slightly washed out look which may actually really work to our advantage I'm going to do all the windows as well because you get a kind of a scorched effect from this laser cutting of the wood where the, the lasers cut through stuff it does leave quite a dark edge so as well to just try and uh, cover all of that and uh, I'm going to get this brickwork as well and I want to get it right down into that mortar course because when I dry brush those bricks afterwards then this will kind of be left behind in the little nooks and crannies representing the mortar. This is actually a really good starter kit because you'll get a really good finish regardless of whether you're a seasoned kit builder or not and that's kind of what you want. Might need a second coat on some of this uh, clapboarding effect but you can see the detail relief there it really is nice. Right, I'm going to continue now with the building of the kit. Now that we've got the inside painted I'm going to start fitting up the roof. So just uh, get on with these. There's just three main pieces left to go on. So um, that's our, our roof strengthening piece. Let's get to it. detail there is on the glue is still wet so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this to dry because as you can see a lot of that white's coming off on my fingers I really just need to leave that be for maybe an hour or so just let it all dry out uh, just keeping an eye that none of the pieces spring in the process and then we'll be ready to crack on with the next stage so far it's really going together quite easily. I'm very pleased with this kit, it has to be said. It's a lot easier than uh, some of the more traditional plastic kits and it fits together so much easier than a card kit would as well. So I think we've got the best of both worlds with this and we're getting that relief detail that you'd get with a plastic kit and it really has been quite a joy to build so I'm very pleasantly surprised. So it's been drying here for a bit and you can see we've got that lovely kind of almost washed out on the clapboard effect. Now I might give that another coat when dry but uh, for now what I want to do is start picking out the blue around the edges and uh, if I find the original sleeve here what I need to do as well first up I think is I need to get the barge boards in um, and get them painted as well. Get all of these edging pieces done, the stairs done, the bracket down here. And I'm going to leave the brickwork until later on. I basically want that white to really dry and harden off before I go over with watercolour pencils to try and get this effect. The colours I've chosen to work with here, I've got um, Humbrol Matte 109. 
and that looks to be pretty much the blue that I want and being matte I think we're going to get the effect that I want and I've also got here number 110 which even though it doesn't say matte is actually matte natural wood is what this is billed as uh, when you buy it from Humbrol and I'm going to use that just to um, put a suggestion of wood on the walkway outside now I'm probably going to need another colour so let's bring in my trusty pot of paints and let's see we're going to want a grey of some sort for the roof so let's see it's kind of what does it look like it looks like it's trying to be almost like corrugated uh, iron so let's have a look at what we've got uh, matte 32 is that um Actually, yeah, let's go with matte 32, which looks to be quite a dark grey. I'm going to try and actually paint these on the sprue, as it were. I think that might work a little bit better. Um, so picking out the undersides with white afterwards, I think, um, is probably going to be the best way of doing it. Um, it is quite tricky. These are quite fine detail. So... I'm going to see how we go. I've got a very, very fine paintbrush if I need to use that to just get into some of this detail underneath. It might take a little bit of a time, but I think it's going to be worth it. So um, looking here, um, yeah, let's get to it. So I've gone for a much finer paintbrush here. Uh, just looking there. Is that going to be a bit too thick? No, I'm going to go with that. So let's just make sure that this is well mixed up. What you find is that the uh, you end up with like big lumps like that. The trouble is these sit around for a very long time and do tend to settle out. So do make sure that this is well mixed up. <laughs> So we're now at the stage, we've got the roof painted, the blue is painted, I'm just going to leave this to dry now, um, and a lot of these stages you really just need to give yourself time as much as anything else to let each stage dry, but I'm quite pleased with how it's turning out, I'm not the greatest of building builders, but I think I've done a reasonable job here, so let's just leave that to dry. So we're here the morning after, we've given it a chance to dry all the paintwork and that and it's come out pretty nice. I'm particularly pleased with this uh, acrylic paint that I used. It's given quite a worn, washed out, weathered look to the clapboarding and I just think that really works quite well. I've also done the brickwork and for these what I've used is some watercolour pencils. So here's one of them, the main colour. I've used red oxide and this is from the Derwent range and they're, they're literally like pencil crayons but it's watercolour so if you add a bit of water uh, with a paintbrush and smoosh it around you can kind of blend it in. The other colour I've added to it as well is uh, again from the Derwent signature range Prussian green hue and that just gives a kind of almost like a mossy effect and I'm going to go over the top as well I've got sap green and uh, just to show you what I do, you kind of just give it a rub over the top 
And we'll do that on all of them. Just like this. It's dead easy. The final one there. And then once that's done, just kind of blend it in with a tiny amount of water on a brush. Don't want to do too much because otherwise you just start to wash it off. But it gets rid of that characteristic uh, grating sort of uh, effect that you get with uh, wax crayons or pencil crayons on a hard surface. It just blends all that in. You can see as well the, the roofs come up really quite nicely there. I'm quite pleased with that. Might need just a little bit um, more of a coat just at the top there. I can see a few bits where it hasn't, uh, it kind of, this wood tends to soak the paint in. So you find yourself using a little bit more paint than you would with a plastic kit. But actually you do get a really deep, rich look to it. You, know, you don't get that smooth surface that often you get with a plastic kit. It, it's got much more of a texture to it. Um, and I think that's one of the really big positives with this kind of kit. So today, the final things to do is um, I painted yesterday things like the guttering and uh, also the downpipes. So you can see on the main picture here that um, there's a downpipe on the front. I'm going to put another one on the back and then a guttering front and back. I've got my little cutting piece of wood and I'm going to start with the, the guttering. So I'm going to get them separated out and then one side we're going to have to trim for length. The other side I think we can use the full piece. So there we are, we've got the downpipes on and the gutters. Um, that was actually quite tricky, um, but that's more down to my lack of skill than a problem with the kit, it has to be said. Final things now, I'm going to touch up some of these downpipes where I've had to cut them off the sprue with the blue paint. And I also want to give another coat to the roof. I think there's a few places where um, it just needs that little bit extra. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to move on to showing you where on where yard I'm planning on putting this. And this has been built in part as being an update to where yard. And this kit has uh, given me the idea that actually it's a really good idea to finally get the top of the hump done. And this signal box is going to go there. But before we do that, I want to show you the other kit that um, Pico has sent over. And this is the Pico O-Gage uh, Signal Box Interior Kit, LK710. And that picture on there is really quite nice. As I alluded to at the beginning of this video, uh, the actual greyed out cutaway building isn't part of this kit, but this just shows you it in situ, as it were. And actually in O-Gage, these parts are big enough that actually I'm really tempted to make this a kind of main feature at the front of my O-Gage diorama layout. So um, it's obviously too big to go into that signal box, but the kit itself is nicely molded. Um, you see here, very sharp on the sprues. Uh, these are for making up the lever frame, and I really like the fact that these come individually. So uh, four to a sprue, and you get three lots of sprues, so giving you a total of a 12 lever frame, should you so choose. So you can uh, conceivably even buy two of these kits and make a really big lever frame if you wanted. Um, but then also... We've got all sorts of other stuff, the uh, various other bits of equipment that you would find in a signal box. And actually, in some ways, the most important, the armchair there. So um, if we go back to that front picture, you can see there the armchair in the corner. And it's just a really nice touch. So we've got the stove, we've got uh, cupboards, um, the all of the other equipment, the block equipment on there. And these are really nicely, sharply molded. And I can see that actually there's an awful lot of enjoyment with this kit, just painting and finishing these. We've also got there for the track diagram. And what I would suggest with this is paint this up and then print off 
uh, a track diagram to match with uh, what you want uh, for your layout. Um, but there's just so much you could do with this to improve the interior of a signal box. Now it also comes with, actually there's a lovely little kettle there too, uh, and it also comes with all the mechanism for the level crossing gates. Uh, and again, if we go back to that picture, this shows it all fully built up with the wheel for the crossing gates. And I don't know whether I caught it on video when I went to these lengths, but certainly at, um, I think it's Ram's Bottom, uh, I actually, um, in the signal box there, they have a fully working uh, set of level crossing gates activated by the wheel in the signal box. And uh, it's actually quite magic to watch. But if your signal box is going somewhere where it doesn't need that, you don't have to add that to the kit. Now, the actual instructions on this are really comprehensive. And I do like comprehensive instructions, um, and these in particular. Pico have addressed um, some of the criticisms of older kits that could be a little bit vague with their diagrams. This shows you an exploded diagram of how all the pieces go together, and then it shows you there with the, the full lever frame and all the block equipment. Now, interesting enough, it's a gate wheel and adjacent release lever, painted brown, only required if the signal box operates a level crossing next to it. And it also gives a painting diagram at the bottom for how you would paint these levers. If we look at the, the picture on the box, you can see these are all different colours. Um, but what's interesting there is I didn't know about the brown levers as the lock for the level crossing gates, but it shows that the that would on the very outer edge, that if you're doing the gate mechanism would be there and painted brown. You then have a distance signal yellow so into the block that the signal box controls the home lever next to it and ditto at the other end so they're kind of the outer limits of what the box controls and then in between you've got um red levers for um home signals yellow for distant blue for facing point locks black for points and white would be any of these that are unused. And actually it was quite common in signal boxes to have unused levers because these were effectively a standard kit um, and they would come as a certain number of levers and a lot of boxes you'll see uh, white unused levers, not at the ends, but just sort of dotted in between to give provision for if extras were added over time. Um, so... We've got the suggested positioning of interior details in Pico Lineside LK715 signal box. And that is definitely a kit which I will now be looking to purchase. Because I just really love the way all this comes together. And in my mind, I want to build this, as you see in this kind of cutaway. And I'm going to mount that on the edge of my O-Gage diorama layer and make it a really nice feature at the front. And in O-Gage, these parts are big enough and they're actually very crisp on these uh, sprues that I think that that would be a really great feature to add to any layout. I'm not gonna actually do anything with this now uh, because um, building the interior without the signal box for it to go in is um, is just asking to lose bits. But certainly when I do get that LK715 signal box, I will do a video showing putting all this together. And I, I'm, I, I think this is gonna be a really great kit. So this is the area on the layout on Weir Yard where I'm envisaged putting this signal box. I did leave this area as a kind of a blank canvas to put a control tower of some sort for this layout. And actually the one that's on Tyne Yard uh, is very much a sort of austere late 1950s concrete construction. But actually I do run a lot of pre-grouping stuff. So I did toy with various ways of doing this. Um, kit bashing something, scratch building something, were all ideas bandied around. But this signal box kit has really given me the idea that actually something a little bit simpler up here might um, go down quite well because my yard is quite abbreviated. So there's not as many points to control up here. Um, it would theoretically control some of these at the other end as well. So actually, a 20 lever box uh, might actually be just fine for controlling the top of the yard. And my excuse for having a Highland Railway signal box is that it's been uh, reused by British Rail 
transferred from a closed line and um, planted here to do another job after it's uh, become redundant in its original location. So I've got the uh, the box itself and that's going to go into this area here. Uh, I still need to touch up some of the paint and I'm actually going to do that uh, in a bit. But just as a test fit, this is the area. And what I'm also going to do is I'm quite tempted to get some other kits, some clutter paraphernalia in there. I think some uh, oil um, storage sheds uh, ratio do do a kit of that. I've had them in the past and they do work really well. Um, so I'm going to have an accumulation of bits and pieces and I think some yard lights as well to light this area. Now I've done it originally as I just did a plain sort of grass effect. So it's actually quite flat there, a purposefully so for a signal box. But I actually want to put down some gravel um, which the signal box will be bedded into and it will also give me some space for future proofing with some additional buildings. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this sort of about, um, I don't know actually, there or should I have this further up at there? Um, I'm guessing that uh, more towards the top of the hump might be better, so I'm going to put it maybe there. That seems all right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get some gravel in for the ground level. So let's get to it. So I've got the materials I'm going to use for the gravel area here. And this is actually a Pico product. It's the Ash and Cinder Ballast. And it's left over from another project. But I think this is going to be perfect. Kind of dark, you can see there in the bag. Um, dirty, well used ballast. I don't want clean ballast here. And uh, what I'm going to be doing as well is I'm going to mix in some of the Deluxe Materials Ballast Magic into this. Um, and then we're going to spread it out dry, get it nice and flat, and then tamp it down with water from a, a spray to set it. And we can also then use this to gently put out for little paths. Uh, I think it needs a little path down to the bottom level, uh, a path up to the bridge and um, some kind of a path up here somewhere. And I'm also going to have a little bit of an area where future proofing, I can put down some of those ratio oil storage um, little huts and just build up this kind of sense that there's a lot going on here at the top of the hump. So I'm going to get on and do that. <laughs> So here we are, final uh, spot for the LK201 Highland Railway signal box here on Weir Yard. This is at the top of the hump. So now it just comes to scores. So first up, finish. Uh, well, the actual kit is pretty sharp and uh, all the edges are very clearly defined. There's no um, uh, bending in it. There's no fuzziness. All in all, there's really not much to fault at all. So I'm going to give this a 9.8. Functionality. I have to say with this, it was really easy to put together and all the bits just clip together where they should. And really the only little errors were probably caused by me. That said, it was really, really easy for me to put it together. And I think that uh, anybody, no matter what their skill, would find this a very attainable little afternoon's build. So overall on this, again, I'm going to give it a 9.8. Ease of use. Well, it is based on a signal box that is still extant. And uh, my feeling is that for those of you who may not want to uh, be bound by rigid prototypicalness, this is a really great small signal box. It's pretty much the smallest signal box 
that I've seen on the market and certainly mass produced. It is a really great little way of putting a good cameo in a corner of a layout and adding just that little bit of visual interest. I've chosen to put it at the top of my hump yard and uh, it actually works out really well. With the combination of a few other Pico products such as uh, ballast and static grass fixed in place with uh, various glues from the Deluxe Materials range, I've been able to very quickly build up quite a nice little cameo. That said, for those who may be prototypical, it may not be as much use, but rule one. It's probably about the smallest signal box that is available on the market that I've seen and the kit does build up into a really nice feature that is great for tucking into small space starved corners. So for this I'm going to give it a 9.8 again. So on to aesthetics and actually I really do like the look of this signal box. I think they've captured the look of the prototype perfectly. There really isn't anything to fault with this. The materials that they've chosen to make the kit from are just perfect and even with some basic painting and finishing I was able to build this up into a really really good focal point for part of my layout. So I've got no hesitation to give this a 10 out of 10. Yes, you heard that right. For aesthetics, this really is about as accurate as I've seen in kit form to represent a small signal box. The only thing that I could think of which might improve this, and indeed these things are available as separate accessories from both Pico and other manufacturers, is to fit a signal box interior. The big wide windows with their very fine fretwork are actually great for showing off the interior of the box and in my view it was probably the only albeit minor detraction that actually looking through the windows at the moment there's very clearly nothing in there. So it's a model which does allow itself to be improved further if that's the route that you want to go down. So no hesitation at giving that a 10 out of 10. In terms of value for money, this kit, I've been able to find it available from a number of different sources from around the £17 mark. And the kit itself is really sharply defined on those frets. Really easy to cut out. It was just, uh, you would have had to have been trying to have made a major calamity in the building of this. So my thoughts are that this does offer great value for money. It's a bit of change of direction for Pico, who are more traditionally associated with injection moulded plastic kits. And indeed, this is also quite different from card kits which are on the market from other manufacturers. I think that the uh, laser cut wood does give the best of all worlds. It's really easy to put together, the detail is crisp and sharp, and it practically clipped together without even the need for glue. You just have a little dab in there to hold it together. So overall, as an afternoon's project, I'm going to give this a 9.9 .9 out of 10 for value for money. So overall, well, this is an amazing score for this kit, 49.3 out of 50. Now you might think that that is really, really generous. And actually, it isn't generous. This kit deserves it. I'm pleasantly surprised at uh, just how well this laser cut wood kit goes together, how well it looks, how easy it is to build and actually that it does offer a pretty good value for money for a very enjoyable afternoon of building work. So that is a deserved score and I look forward to seeing other new products coming through from Pico. So there we have it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. As an update up here in Weir Yard in the loft, it's been great to have your company. We've also put some affiliate links down below to help you find the products that were featured in today's video. And I certainly enjoyed building that kit too. It's something a little bit different from Pico and I'm really pleased to see that they're moving with the times and actually bringing out new products using new methods that have come on the market to really up the game in terms of detail and perfection on a kit. So it scored really, really well and um, I'm going to give this my total thumbs up. Uh, but uh, it's been great to have your company, really happy to uh, show you through this kit. 
and uh, don't forget to take really good care of yourself and uh, like this video too it's really important as well as sharing it as well let other people know about the work that we're doing here and also if you haven't already done so why haven't you subscribed to the channel uh, always uh, welcome new people to that it's great to have you aboard and check back through all of the videos that we've been doing across a broad spectrum of everything from model reviews to uh, construction work on various different model railways but until next time look after yourself and i look forward to seeing you here again bye for now Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, and Helen Sink. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.